Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travelog and welcome to Harbin, China's northernmost city. This is the second episode in our two part mini series, and we've already visited the fantastic and unique Harbin Ice Festival and got ourselves a little culture at the St. Sophia Cathedral. Today, I've made my way across to the Sun Island Park, an enormous park, leisure and entertainment complex in Harbin, and also home in the winter to the famed snow sculpture exhibition. It's minus 22 degrees today. I'm not gonna lie, it's absolutely freezing. So grab yourself a nice steaming cup of hot chocolate, dip in one of those extravagantly large marshmallows and enjoy our trip around Harbin. It's full of surprises. Right, get comfortable because it's time for a fun and activity-filled episode in Harbin. We've done the city centre, so now we can venture out a little further. Don't forget to pack those thermals. You might remember the famed Harbin Ice Lantern Festival, but it's actually one of the several festivals during the winter in the ice city. For an altogether different type of experience, head over to the Sun Island Park. It's a 3,800 hectare recreational zone offering gardens, forested areas, and a water world. More importantly, during the winter, it's host to its very own snow sculpture exhibition. Towering animals, funny characters, and life-size vehicles are painstakingly crafted for our enjoyment. There are little coves, bridges, and slides to keep everyone, especially the children, or the child in you, fully entertained. So the snow sculpture exhibition happens every year and within this exhibition there's a competition that also happens every year between people from lots and lots of different countries who all come here, sculpt the best snow sculpture they can come up with to win the main prize. And this was this year's winner from Russia. Check it out, pretty cool, huh? It's a fierce winner-takes-all annual competition. Teams from all over the world flock to Harbin to take part in the event. People from Finland, Thailand, the United Kingdom, the US of A, and China, to name but a few, turn up in teams to pit themselves against the best sculptors in the business. As you can see, you get all sorts of different kinds of sculptures from the uh, wild fantastic to the even slightly scary with Omega riding what seems to be a time traveling machine um, with an alien on the front. to drag myself away from the snow sculptures, which seem to be more intricately carved than their ice counterparts. Probably it means that the snow is easier to sculpt than ice. I head over to the music being played not far from me. These jovial people parade twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. A stone's throw away from the snow festival in the Sun Island Park is a place that for me was without a doubt one of the highlights of my trip. Lying in the vicinity of the Siberian wilderness, Harbin boasts an indoor zoo come museum where various animals such as endangered polar bears, wolves, emperor penguins, tropical fish, dolphins and whales can all be seen for an entrance fee of around 100 RMB. Welcome to Harbin Polar World, a site truly designed for all ages. With over a thousand individual animals and sea creatures on display, you'll be entertained for hours. I'm a huge fan of zoos and aquariums in general, but this place has got to be one of the most fun I've ever been to. One minute you'll be mesmerized by the feast of colors brought to you through an amazing array of fish, and the next you'll be taking a step back from the glass as two Siberian wolves prowl in front of you with hunger in their eyes. Just watch the polar bears do their morning lengths or engage in a staring match with the extremely relaxed emperor penguins. We've moved to the penguin house with the Spanish network. So uh, she's from uh, Bilbao in uh, the north, uh, in, the, in the Pay Basque, in the Basque part uh, in northern Spain. What do you do here in Harbino? 
What's all the attention? Well, the zookeepers at Polar Land have observed a pair of gay penguins trying to dupe other straight penguins by placing stones in front of them and then waddling away with their eggs, thinking no one was watching. I'm told that the odd behaviour of the penguins has been explained by the fact that they still had a natural urge to become fathers, despite their sexuality. They apparently also spend all of their time together. This one's cute. Uh -huh. they, they actually spin. Okay, check out this little guy here. Woo! Come here, buddy. Whoa, look, look, like he's spinning. <laughs> Woo! There's the one on the right. He is so cute and he's just sort of waving at me. Hi, hi. Spin, spin, buddy. He's spinning. I think I'll give him a fish. Hold on. Well, I, you kind of feel slightly guilty because uh, you chuck in the fish and one of them's been doing the whole sort of, you know, uh, spinning around, doing his waving, his little, uh, his little paw. I don't think it's a paw, I don't really know what it's called. Um, and, um, and, then, and then they all jump off the fish, but I think I've fed most of them now, so it's all good. Woo! Next up was a show I sincerely urge you not to miss. That's the Daily Seal Show. Now these guys are awesome. At first we had a small scale rendition of the hit film Kung Fu Panda, but with the seal as our protagonist. They really got the crowds going, urging us on to clap louder. The whole show was hilarious and fantastically well choreographed. I half expected the seals to begin a full on stand up routine. They were so in key with their surroundings. Right, well I don't want to sound too soppy, and I need to retain a bit of manliness, but the whole place is filled with terribly cute and intelligent sea creatures. Be prepared to go oh a lot. It's a great place to bring your kids above all. They try and avoid the weekends, if at all possible, as the whole of Harbin Polar World is filled to the rafters. I mean, you can't help but be swept up by the gracefulness of the polar bears as they swim. And who could resist the hot dolphins blowing kisses and rings at you? Though in all seriousness, there is something very romantic about this place. Boys, bring your girlfriends here and watch them melt as Celine Dion plays in the background. Okay, maybe that was all a little too cheesy. No need to panic though, it's about to get a whole lot more dangerous. Make sure you've packed your insurance as we hop onto a fortified bus at the Siberian Tiger Park. Oh my god! Okay, I'm actually here in the, uh, in the uh, Siberian Tiger Park and uh, what, what, what happens here, you buy your ticket and then you get put in a minibus, a safe minibus like this one, and you drive around the park with all of the, uh, the Siberian Tigers like you can see just behind, just, uh, just sort of uh, chilling, chilling out there and relaxing behind me. It's, uh, it's quite exhilarating. I've checked the, the, the density of the glass, we're okay, but oh, come here, come, come, come and do this, it's good fun. Here you drive safari-like through the fenced-off fields and get up close and personal with more than a hundred of this endangered species. This is the largest Siberian tiger park of its kind in the world. There's definitely a slight chill in the air, which for once doesn't come from the weather. After the adrenaline rush of driving amongst tigers, it's probably time to lower everyone's blood pressure, especially my own. We're heading up to Yuchuan, which is only an hour or so outside Harbin, or two hours if it's snowing. 
The snow-covered scenery on the way is a photographer's dream. You can get there by hire car or simply pick up one of the many coaches that leave from Harbin city centre. Once you get here, you'll be able to ski, try out your own snowmobile, mingle with the wildlife and generally enjoy yourself. So I've been handed my uh, gun and I'm going to go on a, uh, on a horse trek in the snow, which I've never done before. I've never actually even had a, a gun really like this with a horse. Very exciting. I don't know, do I look like a sort of modern uh, David Crockett or something? Right, let's give this a go. Woo. I think we're ready. Hopefully this horse is uh, on my side. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't really want me to go. Come on, big guy. Come on. He might be scared, scared, scared of the gun. I think he's scared of the gun. It's all right, I've got a minder, I've got a minder. It's all right. There was a time when this part of China was famous for its hunting. In many respects, it's in the local Manchu blood to hunt, as they are originally a nomadic people. I was trying to claw back some of my pride, which I'd misplaced when I dropped my guard with the dolphins at the polar land. And what better way to illustrate my macho side than by horse riding with a big gun? Of course, there was no way I was going to shoot an animal just for fun. So I decided to shoot some clays. Hey, 你你覺得是最好的季節是什麼時候?當然可能是冬天了。冬天呢,為什麼?冬天既既然可以滑雪,我來還可以去,還可以過來打獵。嗯。So uh, he he reckons it's best to come here in winter because uh, you know you can uh, uh, you can go skiing as well as uh, as do some uh, as do some uh, shooting. Uh, just shoot we're just shooting some uh, targets. Nothing nothing moving I'd like to add. Uh you can jaw what's the matter? 你說是打槍嗎?對對對。OK。好好。保險推上。對。嗯。Go pretty loud. Um doesn't hurt your shoulder too much. I don't know if I got a real thrill for that, but yeah, I don't mind doing it at a at just a, a standard, I don't even know what that is. I think it's just a bag of uh, water or something. I missed it by miles, absolutely miles. I'm terrible at this, but good fun. Give it a go. Thanks to finally being able to ride my horse somewhere, I managed to spot tons of different flora, as well as see wild animals looking at me. Here at Yuchuan, you really do feel at one with nature. It's so peaceful. I was also informed that if you come here in the summer, the photographs you can take of the scenery can be absolutely mind-blowing. Niha! <laughs> Um, now, if you're looking for a quick getaway from Harbin, maybe for half a day, perfect place is here. Come here to Yuchuan. It's an hour and a half, or about an hour, depending on the weather, southeast of the city itself. And you can come uh, horse riding, uh, do some uh, sledging, like I'm doing now, horse-drawn sledging, uh, skiing, there's a couple of ski slopes, and also some hunting on horseback as well. Luckily, I was afforded a little rest after the exertions of the day. You'll find that Yuchuan is a perfect day out for some fresh air and fun skiing. But there is also the option of spending a couple of days here thanks to the guest houses dotted around. Maybe basic, but it's clean, warm, and there's even a shower and a TV. Well, I've made my way up to one of the uh, guest houses up in Yuchuan. So yeah, if you've got having too much fun out on the slopes uh, for just half a day and you want to spend a bit longer, I mean, it is, it's a wonderful place to come. It's off the beaten track, something very rustic about it. Uh, you can come here and you can stay in one of the rooms, in one of the basic accommodation here, which includes uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner, and your ski pass is around, I think, 200 kwai. So uh, it's quite a bargain. I think it's probably worth doing.
Well, I've dragged myself out of bed at some rubbish time in the morning, but I'm not too bothered because I'm heading to China's premier ski resort. That's Yabuli. I'm here at Harbin train station and the train takes around two hours to get to the ski resort. Now, you can also get a coach there, but uh, especially when it's snowing like it is this morning, it'll take you between five or six hours. And I prefer the comfort of a nice train. I'm now going to go for a snooze, I think. All right, so as you can see, there's plenty of countryside uh, on my right to keep you entertained, lots of snow and get you in the right mood for some skiing when you arrive at Yabuli. Now, there's one train every day in the morning that leaves from Harbin to get, that gets to uh, Yabuli and then it comes back in the afternoon. And it's very much an entertainment train where there's plenty of space for you to relax and put up a, put all your ski clothes away and your ski equipment. And there's games scattered around in some of the carriages and food to be had. But uh, I think we're about to arrive, so uh, I better get ready. Yabuli is most famous for being China's premier ski resort. But before tackling the slopes, I thought it might be a good idea to see how the locals live their lives. I headed down to one of the villages in Yabuli. The area is surrounded by a forest park, which is perfect if you're into countryside rambling. Grab your cane and take your walk, Yabuli style. It's true that the majority of the people who come here just come for the skiing. But I'm not sure you'll get the full picture of the amazing scenery surrounding the mountain resort that way. This area is beautiful all year round and certainly worth a visit in the summer when the weather is nice and cool. For all you closet train spotters out there, you can enjoy the miniature trains that transport people around Yabuli. The majority are very old school and are in fact steam powered. It's a lovely little experience to board one of these and just head off somewhere, like I did with no idea where I was going. Life down at the bottom of the valley really is very peaceful. The pace of everything is slow and relaxing. There's an entire community living down here, quietly going about their daily business. So I've headed down the mountain to the, to the little village of Yabuli and uh, if you want to get away from the hotels and the villas, come here and rent out a room or a house and you can really see how the locals live, how, what, what the, the local food is like and as an extra bonus, there's a forest reserve around the little village so you can take some nice countryside strolls, you know, have some time to yourself. It's nice and quaint. Let's go and check out one of the rooms. I always find it strange when I come across places so close to holiday hotspots, yet so far in terms of what goes on there. There are similarities with the ski resorts in Europe, where some of the towns at the bottom of a skiing valley barely acknowledge the tourism frenzy going on just a few metres higher. I think both types of places have their qualities. What a better way to discover local life than to partake in a wonderful Chinese New Year ritual. So I've arrived in one of the houses within one of the villages in the Yabuli, uh, in the Yabuli area and they very kindly let me see how they make jiaozi, so in this small restaurant house and uh, hopefully they're going to teach me how it's done. I've been, uh, I've, been, I've been told that during the Chinese New Year people get together, if you've got um, guests coming over, friends, uh, you all get together and you all sort of muck in and, uh, and try and make some jiaozi. Uh, let's hope I don't make an absolute fool out of myself. <laughs> the dumplings I ate here were different from the ones in Harbin. And not just because I made a few. The individual care put into each one, I think really would improve the taste. So uh, my jiaozi have arrived and they've been steamed, not fried, but you can actually have them fried as well. Now, I've also been told about this room. It's interesting in that I'm sat on a heated surface. So 
where we were before, making the jowza, or in my case, making them badly, they cleared everything away, they brought a table, and the, uh, the people from the north of China, they like to have their table here, they'll eat their, their lunch, their dinner, then it all gets cleared away, and you're left with your bed. They put down some thin mattresses like the one you've got behind, and you've got yourself a heated bed and a heated room, which I personally think is a really good idea, considering how cold it is outside. But I am starving, I'm gonna have some lunch, so I'll see you guys later. Mm. Now, Yabuli Ski Resort is made up of dozens and dozens of different hotels. There are only three, I'm told, though, that are five star, like the one that I'm in at the moment. Now, interestingly, what you'll find is that each hotel has its own set of slopes. So, you can also go upstairs, which is the exit for the slopes, rent your gear on the way, rent your sticks, your skis, your boots, and head straight out onto the piste. And when you come back, there's also a spa, a sauna, steam room, and a massage available. So, let's go and have a little gander. As soon as you see the equipment, you'll be glad to find that Yabuli is up to date with the latest skis and snowboards available. I was kitted out with a nice pair of Rossignol Parabolics from France. Definitely comparable to what's available in the rest of the world. And probably a step up from the skiing in and around Beijing. So uh, just uh, come and trying to uh, rent some kit. I've asked for some uh, size 45 shoes and uh, hopefully well, we'll see what the kit's like in a second. But I've been told that uh, you can get 2,000 people here renting at any point. And from the looks of things, all pretty happy with everything. We've got nice uh, parabolic skis and some good, all the same, uh, all the same brands. So let's go try them on. Oh, nice man helping me out. Right, I'm gonna go and get my hat and my gloves and my goggles and uh, let's go get some skiing on. Woo! Skiing in China is still a relatively new sport and you'll find all sorts of levels here. The majority are at beginner's standard, reflected in the difficulty of the slopes, which are primarily the blue ones. However, I managed to attach myself to a few of the instructors who were on their day off, and they looked pretty good to me. One of the differences at Yabuli is that not all of the slopes are connected, and most people tend to stick to the areas directly under the control of the hotel they are staying at. Don't be deterred, however. The snow is great, and everyone here is charming. I was almost tempted to desert my post so I could spend a couple of extra days carving up the powder that was so liberally being dumped down from above. Yabuli hosted the 1996 Winter Asian Games, as well as the 2008 National Winter Games, and it's where the Chinese national skiing team trained, which gives you an idea of its importance in Chinese skiing circles. Let's see what the uh, Yabuli powder has got to offer us, shall we? It's also a good choice for fishing, hiking, swimming, grass gliding and golf during the summer. Despite being situated 200 kilometers northeast of Harbin, Yabuli was definitely worth the trip. It may not yet have the glamour of the ski resorts in the French Alps or of Whistler in Canada, but we do need to remember that the sport is still young in China. There was definitely enough science to suggest that China's biggest ski resort is going from strength to strength. It was also hugely encouraging to see the passion for skiing. Without a doubt, I'm going to be rounding up my friends and heading back up here for more fun-filled follies in the snow. Whew. 
Right, well, with the snow pounding down behind me, unfortunately, that's all the time we've got left for today. Really hope you've enjoyed the last half an hour and our two-part mini-series on Harbin, certainly as much as I've enjoyed filming it. There is the Ice Festival, which is a truly unique experience, just fantastic place to visit. The polar bears, the Siberian tigers, those wacky, wacky seals. If you've got kids, if you've got a family, bring them to Harbin. It's a, it's a great holiday destination. Time for my last run of the day. I'm Mark Edwards, and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travel Log. Woo!